Most writers will confess that they write because they have to write, not necessarily because they want to write. They write out of necessity because of either it makes them feel better or they want to share a story with the world. I actually fall into both these categories. Writing just makes me feel good. When I don't write, I feel as if something's missing from my life. Plus, I yearn to share my stories with others in the hope that they will resonate in a way that brings healing and a deeper way of knowing and understanding. My beginnings as a writer began when I was 10 years old writing in my journal to help me cope and heal with the suicide of my grandmother who had been my caretaker. I was an only child of immigrant parents who worked all day long tending their retail store in Brooklyn, New York. On Labor Day in 64, I was at home with my grandmother. In many immigrant families of the post-World War II era, children were reared by their extended families, especially their grandparents. My grandparents lived with us, and while my grandfather spent much of the time in New York City being culturally acclimated, my maternal grandmother stayed home to take care of me. It was a hot Indian summer day common to the season. We lived in a suburban community along with other immigrant families, and I had my playmates in the neighborhood. I was excited when a friend invited me to go swimming in her pool. I knocked on my grandmother's door. There was no answer. I tried several times, but still no answer. I called her. There was silence. Trembling with fear, I phoned my parents at the store. I sat with my nose pressed to the front bay window until they drove up in, the, in Dad's pink car that matched the house with the pink shingles. My parents dashed out of the car and up to Grandma's room. Before I knew what was going on, my beloved grandmother was being carried down on creaky wooden stairs on a stretcher and put into an ambulance. I never saw her again. Um, so I kind of wove a lot of personal stories, mine and others, into the book to kind of give examples of the things we can write about. This book shares my psycho-spiritual and creative journey as a way to show and guide you on your own journey. I write not only as a teacher, but as a fellow traveler interested in a transformation through writing process. The important thing when you're writing is to keep an open mind and an open heart. This book is geared for the emerging writer, the seasoned writer, and also those in academia. I suggest that readers read through the book first so they return to the writing prompts scattered throughout. During both passes, I recommend having a journal and a pen beside you, keeping in mind that we never know when inspiration will come and when we will be overwhelmed with ideas to write about. The most important thing to remember during the self-discovery process in writing it's rather like a spiraling journey of a labyrinth. A labyrinth is a wonderful metaphor for life, given that in it we follow the path inward and then we return back out using a circular repeating pattern. Inside, as in life, there are times we might feel lost. Other times we feel like the path flows really easily. We are blissful. We feel as if we're headed towards enlightenment, which according to Bernie Signal means that you understand the power of love. When you understand the power of love, you open your heart to an enormous amount of compassion and wisdom. Just as life itself, the art of writing, as I teach it here, is also like walking the labyrinth. As you follow the directions in this book, suddenly you might feel diverted or sidetracked into another writing prompt, and that's okay. Creativity is not linear. It is a process that beats to its own drum and is done in its own time. It can be thought of as always cyclical and meandering. The stuck feeling you might get is when you get that stuck feeling, it's time to take a break. Always keep in mind, though, that you will return to your writing because in the end, it's the writing path that can help you attain a sense of bliss and wholeness. As the old adage says, patience is a virtue. One big rule about writing is to be a writer if you want to be a writer, you need to be a reader. If you want to write in particular genre, such as nonfiction, it's good to read in that genre. In many ways, I believe that our childhoods and whatever books we enjoyed as children or were exposed to as children will be what inspires us and moves us forward through life. I've always been drawn to biographies. I think my mother read a lot of them, and the biography section was the first place I dashed to on our weekly visits to the library. As a child, I love reading stories about real people doing and feeling real things. 
The fantasy world never really fascinated me, although I'm very impressed by people who can write fantasy. While I occasionally read fiction, especially if written by a colleague, biographies and memoirs and poetry continue to be my genre of choice. When you read like a reader, then you pay attention to what is being said, but when you read like a writer, then you should be more attentive to the way the author is expressing his or herself. I think that the best writers read as both readers and writers, striking a balance between the two. When learning to be a writer, it's a good idea to read the works of those writers that you admire. Sometimes the mere act of reading their works is forms like a osmosis to their style. When you read like a writer, you're observing how an author pulls you into his or her story. While reading, while reading, consider the author's writing techniques. Examine the style and the sentence structure. Is it their voices you like? Is it, are they writing in first person or third person? Was their voice authoritative, playful, intuitive, inquisitive, telling? Do you like the images that they're sharing? Can you visualize what they're saying? Do you like the settings they created? Another tip while writing, sorry, while reading, is to highlight your favorite passages for future references. The practice will inspire you and give you a style of your own to emulate. You know, I kind of get concerned about the, the young generation now because I was visiting my son a couple of years ago when he was moving and, and uh, I was helping him unpack boxes and I said, we need to make a list of, you know, what you need, like you know, soap and this kind of thing. Do you have a piece of paper? He said, no. <laughs> He said, I'll put it on my iPhone. I'm like, oh gosh. So I, of course, I made, you know, he made the list, but at, um, on his list, I added notepad. <laughs> <laughs>